Welcome to Online Off Script, where we discuss trending marketing topics and all things new on the internet. I'm Sam Olmstead, the New Orleans Managing Director at Online Optimism. And I'm Mir McNitt, the Social Media Director. This week, we're talking about video production and its departure from long-form ads in today's social media marketing world. Our guest today is Josh Owen, co-owner of ComfyStone Films. Thanks for joining us, Josh. How are you? Oh, I'm doing so fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, we're doing good. Um, so let's just jump right into it because we just said, so you're at Comfy Stone. Um, can you tell us about it and what kind of videos you typically produce? Oh, uh, well, Comfy Stone is quite the uh, video production company. We're often trying to change um, the landscape. I think that's why I love video production so much is it's video is ever present in our world, but it always there's new things to learn every second of the day. So we're always trying to evolve what we do video production wise. So we personally provide video in a strategic manner um, and really focusing in on things from the ground floor of using your phone and going all the way up to full production. So we're kind of like, we do everything in house, kind of every aspect of video and that's why we love it. And I just can't go anywhere else. And being, having a background in video myself, that's just why I love um, video production and, doing all this fun stuff so that's kind of the the short and snippy of it you know obviously there's <laughs> details that i skipped out on but you know that's what we uh, that's what we like to do so you say go anywhere from phone to full production but what type of videos tell me about a typical video tell me about a typical video from comfy stone for a typical client um that really that you really personally like I mean, Sam, is there anything <laughs> such as typical? I mean, come on, you can go from anywhere from point A to point B. Um, I would say, you know, that's the whole aspect of it that I'm trying to dispel is there is no such thing as typical. Everybody's needs are unique and different. And um, everybody should be doing everything at the same time. And especially as your business grows, you know, you're kind of adding layers of video upon video. So um, there should be no typical. You should be doing everything that you can video wise. And that's always the first step is understanding, you know, hey, the phone is this beautiful tool. Let's use it more. Or um, maybe you could be doing more commercial work or you could be doing ads um, for digital and social media. Um, and there's just so many places that we don't think about on the day to day that people are, you know, have their eyeballs set, you know, 100 percent of their time, almost free time wise. And, you know, you're trying to capture those eyeballs. So that's why I say. Is there a typical? I don't know. Maybe not. We'll see, you know. So Okay, okay. There's no such thing as typical, mm -hmm. but what do you like? What types of videos do you like to make? What are my favorite types of videos? Sure. <laughs> um Also, this doesn't I have mean, to be that... like technical. It could yeah. be like do you like commercials? Do you yeah. like narratives? Do you mm -hmm. like docu style? See, that see for, like I said, so when it comes to my favorites, mm. now now, oof, now you're asking me like, you know, you know, I mean, like, and I'm in the ice cream store. What what flavor of ice cream am I going to buy? You know, oh, my gosh, it depends on my mood. But I would say, you know, typically speaking, when it comes to getting uh, the video, I think for me, when it comes to like working for a client, I think the the videos that I like the most are the ones that have the biggest return on investment. And those typically speaking are going to be um, depending upon what you're going to want uh, to achieve. Um, typically we work with clients that, um, really want to develop organic growth. So I like developing organic videos. And so those would be like native videos that, um, really, uh, reach out to your audience, whether you're a nonprofit, you know, and you have specific goals. So making like fun, uh, uh, advertising videos that are more built around, um, that aspect more so, um, developing relationships with your partners, clients, um, things like that, um, update recap videos, things like that, that are more um more driven to develop a relationship i for me i like the store i like the videos that help develop relationships because i'm a i'm a relationships kind of guy you know and i yeah. like you know getting to know people and i think whenever i can extend that format to video and get to know people through video i think that's um definitely what i love the most and what kind of videos i love the most you know, you mentioned a few times that phone is like a totally like viable space to be doing video. And I know that like future mm -hmm. productions have been made on iPhones. Um, do you mm -hmm. have a favorite one of those or do you do you go out of your way to see those? I would say it's not necessary for me uh, specifically. Uh, film is more of its own genre where I typically lean towards things not based off the technicality but based on, you know, the story. Um, and I think that's the case with all content and like, and even with phones, you know, 
Um, so it just so happens that I necessarily haven't seen a lot of phone video um, uh, movies that I'm necessarily like invested in, but that's just because the story hasn't really driven me there yet. Mm-hmm. But that's the same way with, you know, phone content is, you know, it's all, it is about the content itself. It's about what you tell. It's about the value you provide. And um, it's about the story you tell within that value. And so um, all the best movies, you know, if you talk about why it doesn't work technically from a phone perspective or a CGI perspective or whatever, it always leads back to one specific thing and that story. And it's, and it's the same thing in the ad world, you know, are you relevant to the, to the people's choice of the day or not? And so um, to answer your question simply, <laughs> um, I have not, but I would love to, you know, so maybe after this, we'll all go, we'll, we'll get some popcorn and we'll all go down to the movie theater and watch us some phone movies. Amazing. Let's do it. I'm trying to see 52 movies <laughs> this, yeah. week, this year, one per week. So that's doable. 52 yeah. movies. That's yeah. great. I think I've seen. Is there a specific way of doing it? Are you going to go see like old movies, new movies, um, 90s I'm, movies? No, I'm pretty much sticking to streaming and trying to see things that came out in 2021 or later. Um, I'm trying to see- wow. Okay. So that's a big sea of movies. Yeah. I know. I know. Like literally just Netflix puts out like seven movies a week. So like. Oh, yeah, man. I don't have There's a so goal, many. but I think that's going to happen anyway for me. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, you should just not watch The Net. I watched The Net and it wasn't as good as I thought it was. The gonna. Net? I'm watching old movies. The Net with Sandra Bullock. It oh. was like, it's such a funny movie because it's talking about, it's like one of those hacker movies. You know, if you ever watch like 90s hacker oh, movies, so it's they're like just like so. The Net? Like the internet? The Net. Oh, the no, net. Like just The that. Net. That's crazy. Yeah, it's great. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, speaking of old Versus the new. Um, what are the mm-hmm. biggest changes you've seen in ads from like the height of like television commercials to what we now have as social media ads? Yeah, I mean, I think this is an interesting question um, because so much of if you all right, you know, let's let's harken back. You know, we're we're still millennials. So we're you know, we're, we've got a little bit of a young chipperness to us. Um, and we <laughs> remember the old days of watching TV, especially us like we were in the big you know, era of like cartoons and stuff like that. And things were building. And obviously our main source of media was coming through that. And we were really seeing a lot of commercials. But in those eras of like TV commercials, you know, um, before social media was a thing, you know, there was no, you know, uh, people weren't developing their own culture yet, really. I mean, we were starting to see that with like the blue jean era and stuff like that. But, you know, there weren't a lot of offshoot cultures and no one was really had the platform to develop their own culture. So when it came to advertising, you know, back in the day with commercials, you know, a lot of people were more dictating the pace of what, you know, um, to produce ads wise, like what what the content was going to be, what it was going to look like. You know, uh, you know, they told you you like Rock'em Sock'em robots or um, a moon shoes or whatever it was. And, you know, you they really dictated the pace of that culture. Now we're kind of starting to see that change, obviously, with social media. You know, you have to really meet your clients where they're at you know everybody now there's offshoots of culture you know you you have to really identify who your client avatar is who your customer is and really understand you know what their culture is and if you're creating a video that's you know just you know a bunch of kids running around jumping on moon shoes they're gonna you know it may not work for everybody you know you may have to like you know cultivate the video content towards what they particularly love and that's the most fascinating part about it. and that's why i love it now is because now we're seeing like you can be so targeted towards all these different groups of people that all these different groups of culture i mean you see on tiktok like the funniest thing about tiktok is you know i'll m- meet one person in one social circle and they'll be like oh you see, did you see that tiktok where it was doing this and i was like oh no i didn't see that and then yeah. you go to another social circle and they're like did you see this tiktok where they're doing that and i'm like how does it's like everybody lives in their own sub genre of culture in tiktok it's like its own world and oh, so yeah. that's what's so fascinating about it it's just personalization is what you're saying basically mm-hmm. like the level exactly. of customization and personalization is it's insane so I was, you know, when you're talking about like the the story and like how the stories matter, it kind of feels like old ads were like to be the main character, you have to have this. But new ads are like you are the main character, and this is how this goes into your story. Exactly. Wow, it's like it's like you get me. It's like you get me. You just, don't, you just know this, you know. Perfect. Yeah, that's a the great a great way to sum it up is that it's very much built around you know, you reaching out to, to them now versus them reaching to you. Yeah. And so uh, it's just such an interesting shift and it's just continually becoming that way. And yeah. As, as so, new things open like metaverse, we'll, who knows, you know. Oh my God. It's, the metaverse is just so scary. I know. <laughs> but okay. We, so, we don't even want to get to that. 
when you aren't trying to get people's attention and try to like reach out to them, you know, everyone's like, oh, an ad, I don't want to see that. How mm -hmm. do you get their attention when they can be skipping the ad as soon as six seconds in or even skip. one second if it's TikTok? Yeah. I skip all. Yeah, of them. that is, I think, you know, something that we don't uh, in the ad world think about often enough is really, um, really focusing in on that first 10 seconds, um, even five seconds, I would say even faster than that, even the first three seconds, you know, yeah. what is the first thing that they are going to hear, see, experience, whatever that is, what is that? Um, and, you know, and a big part of that is, um, as everyone should, you need to do a lot of testing with this kind of environment is understanding what do people like, you know, and what what do people resonate with? Um, one thing that I've always learned is that people love people. It's it's a weird concept, but oh, yeah. people want like just like we talked about, you're going to them. They want to see themselves in what you're producing. And so um, a lot of times what happens is like consumers don't really know um, what they want. They want to be told what to want and they want to be told what to want through someone that is like them. And so any kind of testimonial human you know, connection, um, any kind of uh, like, even if you do a you know, if you think about like those jackass videos, you know, they they really draw you in immediately because you're just seeing someone do the stunt or something like this. So it's like, but you're seeing a human being do it, which is the most important part. And I think, you know, even as simple as an ad of just having, you know, if you had a choice between someone brushing their hair and someone talking about brushing their hair, it would be a big difference see versus seeing the act versus someone telling you about the act. And so if you're able to get that sensation across quicker and more efficiently, that's just going to be um, the number one thing. Of course, the other part of that is making sure that they have that in those three seconds, you are really in cat. Like, it's almost like you need to have like a mini uh, summary of what the video is going to be about in those first three seconds. So you're capturing everything in that first three seconds of so they understand what they're expecting, but also as native as possible. That's the yeah. last thing I'd say is like, you know, you want to make it feel as as much like the content they're already watching as possible with as little action as possible that they need to take, like especially not trying to get them to move cross platforms, you know, trying to just you know, work them through the your, the platform they're already on. So if you have like an Instagram ad, making them go to your Instagram page more so than trying to go to a web page, um, unless it's a, unless you're like offering some great deal, you know, it's, you know, the worst feeling ever is having to like bounce from Instagram, which you're just already content, like scrolling through to all of a sudden being in somewhere else. So, you know, it's a big part of like that aspect of being able to, you know, cultivate this relationship with them. And I mean, like, you're, that's kind of what you're doing. You're kind of adding on to the stuff that they're already watching. So it should feel like the stuff they're watching so would you make a video in a different manner for different purposes in the marketing funnel let's say um to have that first tech 10 seconds interact with the consumer in a different way so basically you know do you change up the video process based on what you're trying to get the consumer to do um and oh, what is that what does that look like for the, those first 10 seconds yeah, so that's definitely interesting because I think the first 10 seconds is always like the concept is always going to be the same, right? Like, you know, you're trying to make sure that they understand what is being given to you throughout the whole part of the video. But obviously, that concept changes based off of what part of the funnel you're in. So obviously, you want to be having video in every part of the funnel, you know, they can fit and, and be a great addition to all these different parts. Um, the thing I would say, though, is that you know when depending upon different parts of the funnel that part the i think longer you go into the funnel the more stretched your content can be you obviously want it to be short and sweet near the beginning because you don't know them yet you know i don't mm -hmm. want to i'm not going to tell you you know my whole life story before we even meet you know like buy me a drink first let's you know let's let's get to know each other you know um that's how relationships work and that's what you're doing you're doing you're providing a relationship and so just in the same way it becomes more and more personal as you go across. So I think that's the biggest difference is like the messaging becomes more personal in those first 10 seconds. The may, maybe at the end of the funnel, you might even be addressing them by name, you know? And mm -hmm. so that's the big difference is like in the beginning, you're still trying to, you know, be as personal as possible to them, but you don't know them yet. So you don't want to like pretend like you do. You want to, you want to more open it up to like, Hey, I, I, you know, I get your problem and I want to learn more about you come on this journey with me as I try and sell you my product, you know? So that's kind of the whole, you know, big difference that we're trying to do across the whole way. You know who makes really long ads that I watch? That company with the purple mattress? Mm -hmm. and the girls. Oh, that's what I was gonna, I, oh, whoa, that's, a, yeah. 
I think yeah, the same thing. They make like 13 minute ads. And I, when mm. I tell you I am watching that entire ad. What are they mm. doing in it? I, I don't even know, man. Like <laughs> it's she's the, just they had, so it's like a, uh, it's a Sasquatch family. I remember the oh. one they had was like a Sasquatch family and yeah, it's just like, it's just something so ridiculous. I mean, that's definitely a big uh, appeal is like you watch the, those ads and it's like a Sasquatch family and you, you know, you just start to, they're just doing crazy antics. Um, and I haven't seen it in a while either, but yeah, it just keeps going and they just keep talking to you about the ad and, and you're just seeing it over and over again. Like definitely something that's a big part on YouTube, especially because that's where their ads are longer is on mm -hmm. YouTube. And yeah. typically on YouTube, um, if you do break up the social norm, that works for a certain crowd, especially millennials. Like that's like a big thing that really appeals to them is like, is can you make something feel, um, I mean, you're, you're basically creating a comedy sketch at that point. And that's, you know, and that definitely goes to the next layer. That's definitely not something you have to do, but it's definitely something that helps if you, if you're able to, cause that's, you know, if you think about it, people are on YouTube to watch funny videos. And so if you post a video of yourself just sitting there talking in your camera, like that's good, but that's not what they're doing on YouTube. Now, you could probably get away with that more so on social media, like Instagram or TikTok. But again, that goes back to what we were saying is that first 10 seconds better be similar to what they're watching. It better be native. And the nativity of that Sasquatch thing is that it's just a funny video. And that's what people are there on YouTube looking for most of the time is like they're looking for a funny video. You may not see that ad so much on the DIY stuff as you might see it on like the fun stuff. And so, you know, maybe your talking head video works better for ads on top of DIY videos because those people are conscious buyers at that point. They're they're making more logical decisions. They're in that mindset already. So, you know, you're linking it to the two. But yeah, that's a great point. Like those those Sasquatch purple mattress videos Chef's kiss, you know, beautiful. Yeah, you're just like, where is this going? I just can't <laughs> mm -hmm. stop watching mm -hmm. them. <laughs> I love that. Mm -hmm. um, so, Josh, you talked a lot about TikTok. You kind of mentioned it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm curious about how video production has changed in terms of selling video to different clients and consumers uh, on your end now that ads can be made on your phone with mm -hmm. TikTok and Reels and, and you know, pretty simply, um, you know, making video that you can immediately turn into ads. Yeah, I mean, I think the yeah, that's been a common thread throughout our whole conversation is um, how much phone has consumed us as consumers. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, if you're not on that game, then you were five years behind. You know, you're not streets ahead over here. You're 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 way in the in the past. And and that's just becoming more and more so. I mean, you you anyone you can look at all the data that all the data s is corroborates this that you know phone is where it's at. Most people spend their time on their phone at least you know a a good portion of their day. And so um, as you as a as a client, you know uh, it, it's so vital that you're providing that kind of content and that you're providing that content and in a steady and consistent flow. And that's the best way to keep a relationship alive. If you think about it, if you want to have a relationship with a friend, you don't just call them once um, every other month. I mean, you can, that's, you know, I've, I have some friends like that, but you're, they're not my best friends. They're not friends that would, you know, buy stuff from me if I were to sell it. And those, that's the difference It's like, you know, if you want to have a consistent relationship with someone, you have to do it consistently. And that's the best reason why phone is so valuable. And that's why we are trying to promote that with our clients more. Um, and that's why we've even developed our own, um, uh, system to help them, uh, learn that through our own, uh, boot camp that we offer that we're trying to help them, you know, understand and learn and grow through that. So, um, we're really trying to teach people, um, teach our clients how to do that for themselves, because obviously as much as we want to be able to film everything for them, you know, we're not going to be able to be there every step of the way, every step, every day, every, you know, moment. And, you know, being able to teach them these, uh, these skills is so valuable for their business because now they can collect a library. We can help them strategize it on the, on the, on the high level. And that's what we love to do. And that's really what our value as a company comes in is like, well, let's help you understand what those key moments are going to be so that you can go in and film it, um, that you're prepared, you're, you're scheduled and all that. But you know, when the time comes, you know, you'll feel confident to be able to do it yourself. So we really want to teach people these skills so that, cause you know, we all have the capabilities right now to make phone content. We have the capabilities to film it ourselves. Um, we just don't have the confidence. And so, you know, we're really coming in and saying, Hey, we'll make sure you have the confidence. We'll, we'll make sure you have the skills to learn this, um, and be comfy stone certified, you know, to do this, uh, work. So, um, that's kind of, you know, what we hope to help, 
um, develop with everybody because I think it's so valuable and it's a tool that no one is taking the fullest advantage of yet that I've seen. And so to see, you know, outside of, uh, you know, obviously, you know, Adidas can throw money at whoever they want and get mm. whatever they want. But even still, you know, maybe Adidas could be doing something more personal. I don't think that necessarily matters that they do um, because they're so big already. But I think, you know, especially if you're a mid to small tier, you know, size business, um, this is your way, this is your ticket to really like, boost sales immediately and get out there and get, you know, get pumping um, to the next level. So that's what I would say. Josh, before we uh, end this conversation, first of all, amazing chat, um, a lot of great insight. Um, is there anything else that you, you want to promote? You want to boost, you, you know, you're here. Um, and so if there's any, you know, anything that you're working on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. You can find us on all social platforms at Comfy Stone. Or if you want to learn more about our services, you can check out our website at www.comfystonefilms.com. Um, well, that's it. Thank you so much for joining us today, Josh. It's been really great and uh, a lot of key um, insights and important things about video. Yeah, thanks so much. All right. All right. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. And uh, just let, this is our outro to sing a song, <laughs> right? All right. Thanks, Josh. All right. Take it easy. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe and rate the podcast. And if there's anything that you'd like to hear, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. And as always, stay optimistic.